Around one in every 10 Americans has diabetes. That's more than 38 million people. And for 90% or more of those, it's type two diabetes, which is loosely classed as the preventable type of diabetes. But once you've got it, well, that's it. You're basically stuck with it, meaning lifelong blood sugar monitoring, insulin injections, closely counting calories, and facing a major deterioration of health if failing to strictly observe such things. But is type two diabetes really a dead end street? According to today's guest, Dr. Jason Fung, it is not, but is instead something that in many cases can be reversed. Dr. Fung is a kidney health specialist and the best-selling author of The Diabetes Code. Today, he lays down a whole new understanding of what causes insulin resistance and thus type two diabetes. He presents the evidence to back this up and introduces his natural method of restoring normal body function. Welcome to Vital Signs, where we learn how to get healthy from all angles, from the biochemical and nutritional to the things we do that nourish our minds and our souls. I'm Brendan Fallon. Dr. Fong, it's fantastic to have you join us on Vital Signs. Thanks for having me here. Very pleased to have you on to talk about this topic, which your expertise, I know, really puts you at the forefront of. But to start with, there's this prevailing concept that if you have diabetes type 2, that you're basically stuck with it and you can do as much as you can to manage your diet and, and be healthy to an extent, but at some point you're likely going to end up having to take insulin. Does that statement ring true? You know, the background to this is that there's two types of diabetes. There's actually more, but the two main types, type one and type two, and they're quite different. So in type one diabetes, what you get is they're often uh, present younger, and these people don't have insulin. So insulin is the hormone that allows your body to take in the glucose. So say you eat a slice of bread, you have all this glucose. The glucose goes from your stomach, it's absorbed in the intestines, goes into the blood. So all this extra glucose is in the blood. The body doesn't want all this glucose in the blood, so it releases the hormone insulin. Insulin then sort of allows the cells, like your muscles, your liver, your kidney, to take up this glucose and then it will burn it for energy, which is great. If you don't have insulin, of course, then inside the cell, there's no energy and outside the cell, there's all this sort of glucose. So what you have is this state of sort of internal starvation. What you'll see is people will lose weight, lose weight, lose weight because they can't take the sort of energy that's outside and bring it inside the cell. So they'll just keep losing weight until they die. So you see in type one diabetes, you see very skinny children who if they don't get insulin, they will die. That's not what you get in type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes tends to present older and is sort of the majority of diabetes. We see 90 to 95% of diabetes these days is type 2 diabetes. And you don't see very skinny people, you see the opposite. You see very fat people and people with big fatty livers, they have a lot of abdominal obesities, their weight, waist circumference is high, their body mass index is high. So you see the opposite. You don't see people that are starving as you do with the type 1 lack of insulin. Here, the insulin levels are too high and uh, there's still a lot of glucose in the blood. And the idea is that instead of a sort of underfill situation where you don't have, you can't get the glucose into the cell, in this situation, the cell is sort of overfilled with this glucose, so that's why the glucose is still out in the blood. Because you've got too much inside the cell already, the cell can't take any more. Just like, for example, if you have a sports bar, for example, it's Super Bowl Sunday, the sports bar is full, you can't cram any more people. So there's people outside the bar who want to get in, but they can't get in because the bar is full, right? So it's just the same, the cell is full of sugar, you can't get any more sugar in, it's gonna spill out into the cell. So if that's the situation, then the idea is that you can actually get, if you get rid of the excess glucose that's in the cell, through diet, for example, uh, or exercise, although that's less efficient, then you can reverse that type two diabetes because you understand that the cell is simply overfilled with glucose, which is spilling out into the blood, just like that sports bar spilling out into the street. So if you simply reduce your intake of glucose, eventually your body will just burn it all off, all the excess glucose. The glucose that was excess in the blood will simply go into the cell. And therefore, if the blood glucose goes down, then you've reversed your type two diabetes. So it's a reversible process, but because you know the conventional way of thinking of type two diabetes is making it seem like type one diabetes, where you have the this sort of internal starvation 
model. So if you think back to the sports bar, type 1 diabetes is, for example, if the inside of the bar is empty, but you lock the doors, nobody can get in. So outside you have lots of people who want to get in, but you can't get in because the doors are locked. In type 2 diabetes, the doors are open. However, there's too many people inside. So you still have people spilling out in the streets. And therefore, if you had somebody with diabetes and they lost a lot of weight or they changed their diet and they got rid of the junk food and sweets and all that stuff, their diabetes, you know, when they lost the weight, the diabetes would almost 100% you know, either get better or go away. You've spoken about bariatric surgery as kind of evidence that the diabetes is reversible. How is something like uh, lap banding evidence to that effect, would you say? Yeah, I mean, the lap banding in bariatric surgery is a sort of extreme way of creating weight loss. It's very successful at creating weight loss, of course. The interesting thing is that the diabetes would go down by like 90% after bariatric surgery. So, you know, it's strange that the American Diabetes Association up until about 2021 said it was irreversible, yet at the same time, we had definitive proof because we had so many studies of bariatric surgery, lap banding, and so on, that showed that you do the surgery and the diabetes go away. So it wasn't that it was an irreversible condition. The problem was that they weren't using the right treatment. That is, they're trying to use insulin as a drug as opposed to changing the diet. And whether you do it with diet or whether you do it with um, bariatric surgery, you're still changing the diet, right? So in the, at the end of the day, you're changing that diet, you're changing the amount of glucose that you're adding to the body, and therefore you were having much more benefits by changing the diets, but no benefits with the medications. Why? Because type 2 diabetes is largely a dietary disease. So therefore, if you're trying to use drugs for a dietary disease, you're not going to be that successful. For them to suggest that the disease is irreversible, is that basically saying that insulin resistance, like the, the insulin not being able to, to get the glucose into the cells, like that situation is irreversible? There's that. Yeah, they were trying to say that was irreversible. They're trying to liken it to, say, aging, right? You can't get younger. Nobody can get younger, right? And they're trying to say that, oh, type 2 diabetes is the same. Once you got it, it's just going to get worse. You know, it was getting worse because they weren't using the right treatment. They're focused on what drugs to give rather than how to change the diet. It's really important. If you have a reversible disease, then you need to focus on reversing it, not managing it, right? So if you have type 2 diabetes, which causes heart disease and kidney disease and blindness, but it's reversible, then you need to work on how to reverse it. It is a reversible disease because you have data everywhere in the scientific literature from lap banding to bariatric surgery to dietary changes, you know, all the data in terms of diets reversing. There's lots of studies showed that you could change your diet and do much better on the diabetes. Finally, they put out criteria for remission and basically admitting that it is a reversible disease. So that's really important because a lot of people still don't know that message. A lot of doctors don't even know that message. They still consider it because they're trained sort of a few years before 2021. So they're still out there telling their patients, no, it's chronic, it's progressive. You know, once you have it, you'll always have it. Rather than, hey, this is a problem. Your body has too much glucose. Let's focus on your diet because that's where the glucose is coming from. It's not a problem of dysfunction. It's just, it's just packed. It's just, it's got too it's much. It's just too much. Right. It's the, there's nothing wrong with the cell. That's why in all these years, all these decades of research, they, they, you know, they, they were looking for all sorts of reasons, you know, what's happening. They, they, people would say, oh, we don't know what's happening. That's causing the insulin resistance. Oh, they had this molecule, that molecule, this molecule, that molecule. But really is a much more simple. Inflammation, oxidative stress. Yeah, because they're looking for something that wasn't there. So they couldn't find what is it a toxin? Is it this? Is it that? And, and, and they could never find it because the answer wasn't there. There was nothing wrong with the cell. There's nothing wrong with the insulin molecule. There's nothing wrong with the insulin receptor. It was just that there was just too much glucose sort of everywhere. And if there's too much glucose, then there's really a very simple thing. You either have to put less glucose in, or you have to let your body burn that glucose that's there off. Right? So you can start by cutting down the amount of glucose, which is carbohydrates going in as well as sugar, right? So fructose being uh, sugar as well, you want to try and cut those down. Or you can do things less such as intermittent fasting, which is where you sort of don't put anything in and allow your body to burn off that 
glucose. Turns out that they're extremely successful. So, you know, Dr. Unwin in the UK, he published his results in his patients over eight years. And of the patients that followed his low carbohydrate sort of advice, about 50% of them went to a drug-free remission state. That is, they were caught off of all of their medications and their blood glucose went down to a normal level such that they would be classified as not diabetic. And we saw this on our clinic. We, I'd have somebody who was on 100 units of insulin a day, massive amounts. I started them on you know, cutting their carbs and intermittent fasting. Within a month, I had them off of everything and their blood glucose low enough that they would be classified as non-diabetic. And this is after 10 years of taking insulin. They became not diabetic any further a simple intervention.